Hello my friends of Catarina Labs, my name is Ramon Montoya, please welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is about how to uh, create a, your spatial raster for um, X and Y data interpolation with Python and NumPy and Rasterio. Okay, so what, what we have done is that we have a CSV uh, table where we have some coordinates and we have some chemistry data. So for example, in this case, we are going to interpolate pH values, okay, and we are going to do it all the process from the from importing the data, creating the the value for interpolation, creating the interpolation function, and as well exporting this into uh, as a TIFF file with different libraries of Python, okay. So let's start. You are going to receive everything in the description of the video, okay. And uh, the process seems to be a little bit long. However, um, I will strongly recommend that you. Uh, and what is the advantage of doing this rather than doing this in QES? And the advantage of this is that this is a process that it can be automatized. I mean that you can do this and it doesn't matter if you do it for one raster, for two raster or maybe for 10 rasters or 1000 rasters, okay? So this is somehow the advantage um, of doing this with uh, with Python, okay? Even though that it might seem to a little bit, um, a little bit, um, how do I say? Too specific on the Python commands to do it. Okay, so here you are going to receive this folder here on scripts. We are going to create a new node Python notebook. We are going to import the required libraries. We are going to work with. Actually, we are not going to work with. Uh, let me let me let me check if we actually work with mgrid. No, actually we don't work with Ingrid. Okay, so it's NumPy, Panda, SciPy, Interpolate, um, uh, Matplotlib, and Rasterio. Okay, those are all the um, all the package that we are going to use. Then we open with Pandas the chemistry data. Okay, I'm going to run this. And then with pandas we open the chemistry data uh, we are going to index by the column name and we are going to use this is the easting northing and the pH values okay we are to going to drop all the values that are missing okay and then with that we get 176 pH values okay the following step is optional I mean and this is related about how do we uh, uh, I'm going to filter some extreme values, I mean like the everything that is under the quantile uh, 0.1 and over the quantile 0.9, okay? Because, uh, and maybe this won't be the case for you because you are dealing with more consistent data, but in this case um, there, there were some extreme values that were not so conceptually corrected and, may, and it might be... Um, related to to a mesh to a mistake on the measurement system or like on the reporting okay so i mean if you're if you have really high con confidence on your data you don't have to to filter okay but i will filter okay so after that from 170 176 values we end up with 140 values okay and then well, we define some points. We define some points for the interpolation because this is a panda data frame, okay? But in order to to insert it to the into the Python function, we needed some special formats. For example, that points will be inserted as a list of tuples, and values are inserted as a list as well, okay? So that's why this is a list of tuples. 
and values are a list of values as well. This is the we just printed the first five values of every data set from points and from values. Okay, so we define the raster resolution as a variable, okay, and then we create um, a numpy array for x and for y, okay. So this numpy array actually we use numpy arrange and we can all we can also create we can also work with link space okay however when you work with link space is kind of more complicated to work with the raster resolution because um, for example in link space you define the number of points but this number of points is according of what of I mean and something that happens on the raster that you can have that the um, the width can be can be different to the height but if I mean they can be I mean it's possible to do that but maybe you are not interested you are interested in just a regular grid okay and then with the regular grid I re would recommend that you use raster resolve uh, MPR range okay so with that we run it okay and then here we have our range of values um, with a um, with a raster discretization 50 and as well this is for y values with a raster discretization of 50 and this this will be the center points of the raster okay so then we create a grid over the raster extension so we create a grid x and grid y and it will be a mesh grid of x range and y range okay and then we create our gridded data where we are going to interpolate okay with our points over values over the grid and with the linear method okay um, as i told you there is some i mean if you are dealing with temperature maybe you will have more continuous data but in this case there are some jumps on the data it is not important for the process but however because here you have linear and then it can also be nearest and it, or cubic as well so i mean you can insert linear can be nearest and cubic okay it, it might be that based on your data you will have a like a more continuous more continuous or more soft distribution of points okay in this case linear works well nearest creates some i mean creates a, a raster data set that might not be related to something conceptually uh, or that we can prove something or like we can get a very good diagnosis of the water samples based on the based on the distribution so i guess linear is a good approach for this data i mean for your data could be different okay so we run it and then we can do we can show our interpolated values here we can show you and this is uh is inverted because as you as you see our values I mean our y value goes in this direction the positive is in from top to bottom while the column by well the row value goes from from top to bottom okay so this is inverted but for the uh, the your special data set it will be different okay so and then okay this is everything from the interpolation then we are going to work with the definite with the raster transform array this is from rasterio yeah and then we get the raster transform array and as well we get the we define the uh, we got the um, crs okay and this will be our crs okay and with this function we create the raster so interpolated raster okay will we drive will be active this is the height the width it will be only one band 
the, the data type will be the type of our raster, the CRS, the system of reference will be this one, and the transform will be the one that we get. We paste, okay, once we define the interpolated raster object, we paste our uh, NumPy right inside as the first band, and then we close. Okay, so, okay. Uh, what is the purpose of that? So actually in the, the interpolated raster zoom to layer because okay so maybe yeah okay so this is the interpolated raster of our results okay uh, so this is the procedure in Python on NumPy and uh, Rasterio uh, actually, those Rasterio, Fiona, Shapely are workarounds of GDAL, okay? And what I have seen is that GDAL is really complex to run. I mean, it has a Python library, but it's really complex and very declarative, even more declarative. I mean, you need to do lots of steps in order to, to get something done with Python, with GDAL Python. Okay, so that's why those this library comes as a more simple option to create geospatial analysis. Okay, thank you for all and thank you for your patience. I hope that this tutorial will be interesting for you. Um, and hope to see you in coming tutorials. We are going to develop uh, webinars in Shapely, in Rasterio, because actually we want we want what we want is pub, that people use uh, Python, the geospatial Python, as a great tool in order to create high power of analysis. Okay, so that's what we that is what we want. I mean, we want that people can do a lot of analysis with few lines of code, and even mostly in Python. I mean, not in I mean not not using Python to prepare. Uh, not only using Python to prepare some geospatial um, files, but rather to do all the, but rather to do all the analysis inside Python. Okay, so because that what that is something that we are looking for. We are looking for uh, for the not only to to do the monitoring or maybe to do to have some remote sensing data, but actually come to a diagnosis from that from this data okay so my name is Hugo Montoya thank you for following us and as we say in Spanish viva el software libre and see you in coming tutorials have a great day bye